Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast, the best a man can get. That. No, but I wrote it down. So it goes in. Yep. It goes oh, right I'm in. This pen's running out of ink. Anyway, any I'm Hoosiers, tell me more. I'm your host, Dave. Talk to me, Dave. And with me tonight is uh, Justin. Hey. And Jeremy Adam, who hates it when I call him that. <laughs> but it just sticks. It sounds so good. It rolls <laughs> trippingly from the tongue. Yeah. As does the it, bard would say. Does it really? It does. <laughs> All right. And Jason, but as long as you pronounce it properly, the Y, it's a hard Y. It's not yeah. Jeremy Adam. It's Jeremy Adam. We've talked about this. <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> and Jason is not here tonight. Nope. It's a three-man show this evening. It's a party Indeed of three. A par- yeah, part- <laughs> <laughs> party of three. It's um, my favorite show until they canceled it. So we... Last week when we did the show, yes, we didn't talk about why we hadn't done a show the week before. We did which not. Which was somebody broke into Justin's car. Yep. And smashed your window. Yep. And stole your shit. A whole bunch of it. Yeah. Talk about that. Oh, you want me to relive my personal trauma? Yeah. Okay. Uh, For the camera. Yes. For the audience. The audience is. For the views. They're very concerned about all of that. Yeah. Well. Uh, I was working at a day job. In this instance, it was night job because I was closing. Right. Um, Had my my car parked out back. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a backpack in my car. In it had a a Nintendo Switch and four or five games and uh, several personal belongings and effects, as well as my wallet, as it turns out, which had my debit card, my ID, and my identity in there. And... uh, Cash? Uh, th- there was no cash. Oh. I normally don't deal too much in cash. Right. Um, but uh, I get an alert saying that my card had been used, and I'm like, oh, no. Did someone skim my card? We've heard about these card skimmers. Yeah. Well, I got caught up in the shift. I said, no, I didn't do that transaction. Hopefully it would shut it all down. And then I got another text message probably about 20 minutes later saying my card had been used somewhere else. Yeah. And then I got concerned. <laughs> Uh, I go outside to my car to find my wallet and make sure I didn't just leave my debit card somewhere. Right. And when I approached my car, that's when I realized my passenger side window had been completely busted in. Yeah. And my backpack had been stolen. Yeah. So I've been spending the last uh, two or three weeks trying to uh, rebuild all of that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty shitty. I bet. That sucks, man. Yeah. It's so terrible. like. So, so like, did you have they found the person that that stole your stuff? No, no, because the bank that I use does mm-hmm. not give out the information. So even though I knew where the card had been used mm-hmm. and I was refunded for those transactions, they wouldn't tell me where it was, so I could give them that information uh, to the police report and have them go look at those cameras. Why wouldn't they tell you? So you because could... that's all of their investigation department's job. Oh. Their investigation department. Are they investigating it? I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Mainly because um, I've had no money. <laughs> and without right. an ID, your bank is really not uh, bending over backwards to give you money. Right. It doesn't matter how much money is in your account. If you don't have an ID... Mm-hmm. The most they'll do for you is $100, and that's after about like 15 to 20 minutes of personal questions. Right. Questions that I think, oddly, not everybody is going to just know right off the top of their head. Mm -hmm. Like, some of them are easy, you know, like, name some transactions you've made in the last 30 days. That's easy. I'll pull up my app. I'll look at those. Name the month and the year that you opened the account. Well, I... Can no ballpark. Idea. Yeah, I've got like a four month time frame that I can give you. That's not good enough. No. When I didn't answer that one correctly, I got more questions thrown my yeah. way. Yeah, I can. I think I can give them the year that I opened what my bank account. What was your like, father's first pet's name? How would you know that exactly? How would they know that? <laughs> They're banks, man. This is yes. America. Get yeah. on board. That's ridiculous. In America. I uh, I don't know if I talked about this before, but I I went to uh, to a show in Atlanta one time, and when I came out, there were some kids like standing near my car, and 
And I was like, oh, this is about to get serious. Like, some of these kids are going to try to mug me or something. So I kind of do this, like, circle around my car, making sure, like, nobody's messed with it. And finally, I'm like, okay, everything looks okay. And I hear this girl goes, yeah, your car's okay. And I was like, what do you mean my car? And I look over, and her w rear window had been smashed in. And, like, purses had been taken out of it. Oh, wow. And um, so these kids, like, lost all their stuff. And all they had left was a bag of, like, you know, six-hour-old Wendy's in the back seat and they're like you want some fries like i do not i'm sorry this happened to you yeah you get a lot of like sympathy and remorse when people realize that yeah. you know you've had a whole bunch of stuff stolen i think the part that is the most frustrating and upsetting to me isn't the fact that i lost all that stuff you can replace anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just about anything. Unless it's like an old antique photo. Yeah. You're going to be able to replace just about anything that gets stolen. Um, the part that bothers me is just like doing the mental math. This person, whoever they were, mm -hmm. broke into my car and took my backpack. Mm -hmm. A backpack that maybe if you're going to pawn shops and if you're going to, uh, you know, game resellers and stuff like that, maybe maybe has about a four to six hundred dollar cash value yeah maybe but all in all it's gonna cost me thousands right like the stuff that i lost replacing all of that so just go ahead and double that right there 600 becomes 1200 yeah even though i spent probably about 800 on everything that was in there mm -hmm. so now i'm looking at you know 1500 dollars that i've put out Plus the five hundred dollars to repair the window, the window, yeah. not to mention the damage that was done to my brand new car that mm. depreciated its value substantially. Yep. So all in all, I lost thousands of dollars for this person to make like four or five hundred. Right. That's the part that really irks me. Like you know, if you are yeah. hard up for money, I'd give you twenty bucks, but you're just gonna, you know, wreck yeah. somebody's life for a few weeks, for a few months. I mean. Who knows? Like, you know, you don't know how well off somebody is. That could have broken me. Mm. Like, that could have been the thing that just completely broke me. And now my mm. bills aren't getting paid. And now I'm, you know, evicted or all this other stuff. Thankfully, right. that's not the case. But to this person, they don't know. They don't know what and, that's like. They, they mean. And it really sucks. Like, there's also, you know, why your car? Yeah. Because, I've you know, I've seen the parking lot where you, where you work. And there's, like, so many cars there all the time. All the time. And so, like, it's, I mean, it's right next to the one of the, you know, the biggest mall in Georgia. Yeah. And so every car that's in that parking lot, why yours, you know? Because mine was there. You know, mine there's no there. cameras behind your building or anything? Or? There are cameras all around my building mm -hmm. except for there. Right where you parked. Mm -hmm. As the manager, you think you would have parked in a better spot. Well, I would have thought that, um, you know... People wouldn't do dirty shit like that. Yeah. But, you know, you live but in New the, There's a reason you you're building as cameras. So, well, that sucks, and I'm yeah. sorry that happened to you. Now, on a brighter note, there are some people really investing in the future right now. Yeah. Big, big investments going on right now. In fact, there is a, uh, a competition going on. Not a competition so much as uh, an incentive going on. Mm. It's a $10 million reward okay. for the first team to develop real-world avatars. As in the movie, avatar, avatar the Movie, okay. where there are, like only in this case it would be robotic instead of, you know, yeah. uh, biological. Yeah. But there's a, a robot who can move and mm -hmm. react in real time at a, at a person's behest, at a person's command, right. like a person... Is moving mm. and the robots moving at the same speed at the mm. same time. Okay. okay. There's a ten million dollar reward to have this uh, developed and built by 2025. Oh wow. Okay. So there was a movie we similar need to, get to on that. It. With, it was Bruce Willis. And now this is IRL. No, no, no. But I'm, 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 I'm saying there, there was also a movie similar to that with Bruce Willis. And I can't remember. What, it was okay, called like Surrogates, maybe. Surrogates. Yeah. yeah. That was but pretty that was, cool. It was more of. I mean, personal honestly, protection. It, it was that was still it was essentially the same thing as Avatar, except not on an alien planet. Well, no, because um, in Avatar, it was about you know, yeah, they went into this pod to control it or whatever, but mm -hmm. it was more about the alien species and everything. Whereas in Surrogates, it was keep your fragile, fleshy body 
put away safe, somewhere yeah. safe and just go out in this, you know, safer, fleshy body. Right. With superpowers. <laughs> I liked it. That's another one of those movies that, you know, the concept was so great. Yeah. And the execution was meh. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't meh. a bad movie. It wasn't a bad movie. I, I just thought it. they could have done more with it. In fact, like, I I was actually thinking earlier today, like, I could count on one hand the amount of movies I've seen that I thought were just bad. Because I'm really easy to please when it comes to movies. Mm-hmm. Like, even, even uh, like I saw Suicide Squad the other day. <laughs> I didn't hate it. No? Like, it entertained me. It kept me entertained. At no point was I like, fuck it, I'm done. Well, the thing with like, Suicide Squad is it's an all right action movie. Yeah. But as far as a superhero movie goes, it's yeah. terrible. It's well, not see, a great DC mm-hmm. my, kind of movie. My whole thing is, is. Same thing with X3. If the movie is bad or not, I still watch it all the way through to the end. Yeah. Like, I will get, th- like, 40 minutes into a movie, tops. Like, mm-hmm. that's the longest it's going to take for me to determine yeah. whether a movie is good or bad, in my right. opinion. I will still finish the movie, just like, you know. Fingers crossed that there's going to be a moment of it's redemption, and you're bad. like, oh shit, now the awful all makes sense. Yeah. Rarely happens. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think I've ever turned off a movie because I was not enjoying it. I don't think I have either. There's been movies where I was like, I kind of wish I'd done that. Right. Like we talked uh, the other week about um, uh, drunk people, mm-hmm. where it just never got funny like it was supposed to. Uh, Magnolia, which was just weird and did not make any sense to me. Um, being John Malkovich was I thought I saw it twice and both times I was like this is awful. This Were is you just... hoping it'd be better the second time? Yeah, I was like because you know I saw it once when I was younger and I saw it again like five years later I was like maybe I'll get it now like no it's still bad. There's only there's only been one movie in my life that the first time I watched it I hated it and then slowly loved it more and more every time I watched it mm-hmm. and that's Napoleon Dynamite. Mm-hmm. You hated it the first time you saw it? The first time I saw it, I saw it in the theater. And okay. I saw it with a friend of mine. And uh, he was a little moody at that moment. So my head wasn't really in it the okay. first time I saw it. I'm just like, all right, I guess I'll see this fucking movie. <laughs> because it wasn't what I watched, yeah. wanted to watch. Like It was just one of those limited releases. Like, oh, they only have two shows of the Napoleon Dynamite. And there was another like bigger, better like, yeah. tentpole movie I wanted to see. But my friend insisted on Napoleon Dynamite. I'm like, eh, fuck it, we'll watch it. And I watched it, I got to the end, I'm like, what was the fucking point of that? <laughs> what was the point? Yeah. I hated it. And then it came out on DVD. My friend got it. He's like, I Same loved friend. it. Mm-hmm. Same yeah. friend. He's like, I loved it. I'm like, man, I hated that movie. He's like, watch it again. It's really funny. I watched it again, and I had a few chuckles. Like, it made me chuckle a few times. I'm like, all right. Like, it's not bad. And then uh, another one of my friends who had never seen it was hanging out with us a few days later. Mm. We put it on again. Yeah. This time I was laughing. Like, I was actually laughing, really enjoyed it. And then I ended up buying it for myself because I had fallen in love with it. I thought it was right. a great movie. Oh, the one movie that I uh, hated so much that I did not finish it. There's only been one. The movie that I hated so much I did not finish it. And that's Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Okay. With what? Steve Odenkirk. <laughs> It's a terrible movie. Isn't it the one that's like, it's already a spoof of... of they like, basically take, like, it's a spoof of, like, the old, the like... Kung uh, Fu movies. Yeah, the Kung Fu epics. Yeah. Only they take, like, scenes with Steve Odenkirk with, like, a really bad CGI cow at one point. He's, like, Kung Fu fighting with a bad CGI cow. Yeah. But then they also take clips and bits of actual old Kung Fu Chinese movies. epics... Yeah. And they just dub silly bullshit over it <laughs> and then superimpose Steve Odenkirk into those scenes. Yeah. And it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, right. And I think the, the wrong dubbing would have been funny if it weren't in that movie context. Like, yeah. clip by clip, yeah, it would have been hilarious, but it was just a mess. It was just a hodgepodge, right. silly, shitty mess. Yeah. I never saw that one. They were practicing to take down the villain. Mm uh-huh. hmm. By going at the nipples, oh. like that was, ha ha, ha, like trying to go for the nipples. Yeah, that was when that's when the movie <laughs> lost me. When like they were preparing to fight the big bad, yeah, and they had these kung fu dummies, and they were kung fuing and then like going into pinch nipples. That's like you know what, I've had about sixty minutes of shit. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my losses. Yeah, only time I ever like cut it off because I hated it so much. At least yeah. you did that with the the movie I hate the most, 
and will like fight anyone if they ever say it was good is S Darko. Donnie S- Darko's yeah. sequel. I paid money to rent that. <laughs> Why would you do that? Cuz I, I didn't it. it was around the time I'd seen the first one. I was, you know, a lot younger than I am now. Ooh. So I'm like, okay, it Are can't sure be bad. Older? And I'm sitting there, I'm watching it like this is this isn't good. Maybe it'll Maybe it's gonna get better. This is just getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> See, they they do that sometimes when a movie comes out, it's mildly successful in the box office, mm-hmm. but then it slowly becomes mm-hmm. a cult hit, mm-hmm. yeah. like Donnie Darko. Yeah. They did the same thing with the movie, and I think I've talked about this movie on the show before, um, with American Psycho. Yes. Yeah. American they... Psycho, they had the Christian Bale American Psycho phenomenal movie, mm-hmm. one of those cult classics, Jared Leto dies. Spoilers! <laughs> um, <laughs> Man. or does he? But <laughs> they came out with a sequel called American Psycho Two, um, and uh, <laughs> there bullet. was there was there was a colon. You know, it was American Psycho Two colon blah, 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 some other right. you know subtitle yeah. starring Mila Kunis mm-hmm. as a girl who had been uh, present during one of. Patrick Bateman's final Rangers. murders and uh, was the one that like, got him caught. Like her babysitter got killed mm. and then she killed Patrick Bateman yeah. and then went on about her life. Wasn't it originally like it was a whole different story and they're like, we have the rights to American Psycho. That's what it felt like. Like yeah. watching it, it felt it had a completely different tone, a completely different feel that mm. it did not feel like an American Psycho movie. Like I could have watched. Yeah. Like if I would have started the movie. Eight minutes in, and just finished it all the way through, would have never crossed my mind it was American Psycho. Yeah, not once. That's the only thing that makes you think it's American Psycho is the fact that she says Patrick Bateman at the beginning. Of right. The movie. That's how it is with like the show Riverdale for me. I don't know if you've seen it, <laughs> yes. but it's it's any teen drama thriller, and they just happen to name the characters after the characters from the Archie comics, and they happen to find a hat. That would fit this guy and make him look like Jughead. Yeah. And and, like, and they, it die, works. Like, they I, dye Archie's hair yeah. like um, the most ridiculously like unnatural kind of red. Yeah. And I, I've watched <laughs> the show. I actually enjoy the show. It's not a bad show. I've heard nothing but it's, but great it's just like they didn't have to do that, but they did that. It's, it's literally like they're like, it's well, we got weird. this, we got this, and then, uh, oh, we got the rights to Archie. Yeah, let's do that. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of like a reskin. Like yeah. when you think about like playing video games and you buying DLC or you mm-hmm. fight bad guys and they're just a reskin version of another bad guy yeah. to make it more appealing. They're doing the same thing here. They're like, all right, well, we have a great script mm. for this teen drama with murder and suspense. It's going to be great. How do we hook them in? How do we hook them in? You know what? Let's reference old characters. Yeah. Maybe like and honestly. Nobody who's in the demographic for this show ever read the Archie comics. No. They didn't. But it's it's a it's a property. Yep. It's a property and it has recognition to mm-hmm. it. So because it has recognition, it gets people watching it to be like, oh, okay, so that's Jughead and that's Archie and that's Lucy or whoever their names are. <laughs> and it's Betty and Veronica. Whatever. They I watch it. What? They watch it and then they get roped in by the good story. Right. But they only picked it up because of the Archie skins. And now they have to keep the Archie skins. Yeah. Because it's too late to turn back. <laughs> they already got them in there. Yeah. The only other way they could do it is slowly kill off the Archie characters and just bring in fresh Which characters. Which they could do. They could. Yeah. They could. I tell you what, man. These days, with all of these television shows... <laughs> I've been watching a television show recently that uh, came onto the Netflix called Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Yeah. Have either one of you guys watched this show? I know what you're talking about, but I have not actually watched it. It's but Jerry Seinfeld. Is it's the, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. And honestly, like, I was a little iffy about it at first mm-hmm. because I just didn't know what to expect. I thought it would, might not be very entertaining. It turns out it's, an, it's incredibly entertaining, and it kind of like, it almost feels like a snapshot into that life yeah because it's just jerry seinfeld getting an old car fancy car whatever Mm. uh going and picking up one of his his own car uh some of them are is his own some of them he gets from other people 
but apparently he has a massive car collection. And I'll tell you, Jerry Seinfeld is not shy at all <laughs> on this show about how filthy, stupid rich he is. <laughs> he is not shy at all, and it's right. kind of funny. Um, like, at one point, uh, one of the comedians asked him, like, he's like, well, you know, I'm a car guy. And they're like, how many cars do you have, Jerry? Uh, and he's like, uh, I have an, like, like, I have a number that if you heard it, you would say, that's not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, that's fun. Um, but it's him going around with, like, famous actors and comedians just shooting the shit. It's like they go on a day trip. Yeah. It's like, all right, well, come, I'm going to pick you up. We'll stop and get some coffee, get some breakfast. We'll hit some shops and just walk on the sidewalks and everything. It's thoroughly entertaining. Yeah. Just listening to them, like, process comedy. Because it's not like they're telling jokes. Some of them, sometimes they are telling jokes, but they're really analyzing comedy and yeah. analyzing each other's comedy and material. It's very fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like something fun to do. I'd love to just put some cameras in the car and drive around, go get some coffee and yeah. chill out and just shoot the shit all day. Like, I mean, we've a done, little day we've day. sort of done that without we the did, cameras. Like, we, we, we did that at the outlet mall. Yeah. Briefly. We, 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 we even did post have the cameras that, up. At that one, yeah. But, uh, did we ever nope. post any of that? No, we didn't. No, didn't think so. Bonus content. <laughs> Wasted effort! No, it's going to be like, so we, we recently did the Patreon video. Yes, we did. Did you watch which it? Which means that we. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, we will have a Patreon page that you know people can go on and, and give us money, so that we can do things. And one of the rewards is kind of behind the scenes content and stuff like that. So, like I, a lot of people don't know about you know when we do the show, we the cameras are running like long before and long after the episode. You know, normally about twenty five to thirty minutes. Yeah. sometimes more. So there's, there's good stuff in there that just doesn't make the show that you know I'm, yeah. I'm slowly putting together into. Like a behind the scenes kind of yep. video thing. I mean, so. and if only you were, you know, a little more devoted to the editing, we could just <sighs> chop it all up and make it make it so. Listen, <laughs> man, when you're the Shots only one doing fired. the work, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, hey, it could be worse. When you also have a day job that takes up a lot of your time, it could be worse, Dave. It could. I could have not felt like making the drive today. Ooh. That's true. Man, more shots. <laughs> What are you talking about, Jeremy Adam? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I recently realized that I have to start working out. Because mm. for, for the past six years... Is it that button worked, situation? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because <laughs> like, I, I worked in restaurants for the past six years. The last year-ish, mostly in the kitchen, mm -hmm. doing hard labor. Mm -hmm. The last like four months of that, like in a really hard kitchen... We didn't have all the bells and whistles of previous places that had like, rack really rack. scrubbing the grills and picking up large things of fryer oil that's hot and trying not to burn myself. And we did pick up the grill. And yes, we have at times picked up the damn grill. <laughs> and it's heavy. And I I'd actually started losing weight in that last four months. Like when I was working with you, mm -hmm. I was losing weight. Now see that's what's funny is because you're talking about working in the kitchen mm -hmm. and losing weight. And since I started working at that place, I have gained like seventy pounds. Maybe it's all muscle. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it, dude, I used to be a twig. Yeah. And, uh, well, ever since I quit there back in December, uh, and I've, I've now, you know, sitting behind a desk, and I've, you know, for three months I've not worked in a grill or not worked in a restaurant, and I've put on weight. Like I'm, I'm heavier now than I've ever been in my life. Mm, Only by about five pounds, but still, like. Just because you're all uh, sitting. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like it's gonna go down now. No, no, no. It's only going up. It's only going up. Like, I always and make then, the joke that I'm a growing boy, but yeah. I really shouldn't grow anymore because there's only one direction I can grow. Yep. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Out. But, like, around. you know, when I when I walk and, and stand, I carry myself pretty well. Like, I, I keep my stomach in, my shoulders back and stuff. But when I sit down, like, I'm making actual effort right now <sighs> not to have my gut out as I'm sitting here doing the show. And you can still see, like, the button's kind of pulling. Yeah. That's not muscles, guys. It's like your buttons are doing with your belly. Your belly is doing to your shirt buttons what, like, a girl's boobs would do to her shirt in the late 90s. Yeah. Just, like, you pull on the buttons to tell everyone that it's big. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm doing, but lower. Right. Well, you should just accept it. Let it all hang out, you know? I mean, I, mean, I can't. Let's see. Don't. <laughs> You're going to have to undo a button or two to do that. Oh, God. Don't tear your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just there, highlight. There that, have been James. times when I've been at work and I've looked down and I've seen like my buttons somehow have just come undone. There's like two buttons just open. <laughs> just, oh man! And I'm like, oh, dude, I was just talking to my boss. <laughs> see, now I have. Did he see that? <laughs> I have three shirt options at work. Yeah. I have a button-down shirt mm -hmm. like that, only yeah. branded and whatnot. I have one of those long sleeve dry fit shirts, you know, the dry fit, uh, like athletic wear shirts. Yeah. Is that like a form fitting one, or like a looser fit one? Depends on the size, but okay. it's it's a little bit. It's not <laughs> form fitting. It's not like skin tight. It has a little bit of uh, gotcha, loose fabric in there. And then I have chef coats. Yeah, and I wear chef coats because I don't have to tuck them in. Yeah. And it's flowy. It gives me it gives me room to breathe, right? Nice and room and, and room to not suck in should yeah. I choose not to. Uh, so I go with that all the time. If I don't have to tuck my shirt in, yeah. I don't want to. But at work, if I'm wearing anything other than a chef coat, I feel compelled to tuck it in. Yeah. Whereas you know there are guys out there who tuck in their shirt all the time, and it. Really blows my mind sometimes when Scary. I see it. Like you see, you see like a guy in like their mid forties, early fifties, and they're walking around in khaki shorts yep, and tennis sure shoes and socks halfway up their their calf. Yeah, and uh, and they have their t shirt. Yeah, it's like some not, sort of not like, even like a polo, like a t no a t shirt, like a plain t shirt yeah. tucked in. They also neck. got a belt. They also yeah. de well. If you're tucking in, you better have a belt. You're a fucking animal. <laughs> All right. If you don't have a belt and you're tucking in your shirt, you're a goddamn animal. And their okay? phone's probably on a clip. Yeah. More often than not, you have to have quick access. The, the quick sad access. thing is, you're describing my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm describing. Except, I've never seen my dad wear mandals. I'm describing my dad, only my dad doesn't tuck in his shirts. That's the only <laughs> difference. Yeah. My dad also wears a ball cap all the time. Mm. Love you, pops. Yeah. My dad doesn't wear a hat. He uh, he does tuck in his shirt. He does he does wear a belt. He does have his socks pulled up, but he's not wear mandals. Thanks, Dad. My dad does not wear socks with mandals. He either wears mandals or he wears white socks with white New Balance sneakers. <laughs> yeah, has to be New Balance. Nothing else will do. Yeah, that's pristine stuff. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I am going to have to work out at some point, which I hate doing. I'll do it if I have somebody there pushing like, me egging and, like, you on. and doing it with me. You worthless but piece I, of shit. I literally climb that next flight of stairs. Yeah. I will not go to the gym by myself. I just won't. Well, see, here's the thing that I found about working out, and I'm not one to talk because I also have some rotundness to me right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had my several. I've had several stents in the past with. Working out and exercising on a regular basis and going to the gym. And, you know, some life of it will happen and I'll make mm -hmm. excuse after excuse. And then I'll just kind of slowly taper off. What I have found for myself personally is that the idea of motivating myself to get up and drive to the gym and exercise for an extended period of time and doing it on a regular basis is very challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very challenging because it sounds so unappealing. That being said, when I've done it in the past, and I have got myself up to exercise on a regular basis, and I have done the working out thing, I you feel fantastic. Oh, yeah. Like, the feeling after working out, when you've been doing it for a few weeks and you've finally gotten like not, that... Not just the pain that feeling. That painful <laughs> soreness that you always get... Eventually, you get to a point where it's a dull soreness, and you kind of enjoy it. Like yeah. you enjoy that little bit of soreness in your muscle. You're like, "Yeah, I did so fuck yeah," and you feel great afterwards. Yeah, and I know that I feel great after I exercise. I know this. I've experienced it countless times, and yet I still don't go to the fucking gym. <laughs> I ain't so going. It's routine. It's routine, yeah. and routine is really difficult when you don't have a set schedule. Mm -hmm. You could, you actually stand a really good chance of getting a regular regiment going on. At yeah, the now that I work at like a nine. To you five have a nine to five job. weekends yeah. off. Yeah, you can get off of yeah. work, or you can get up a little bit earlier no, at the I'm gym before that. work, or you can just get off of work and go to the gym. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing: don't go home work home gym because you'll never leave home. It <laughs> goes. It either goes home gym work. Or home, work, gym, home. Yeah. You can't come home in between the no. work and the working out. It won't work. Because then that TV's right there, and it's work, like, hey, work, you work. should watch Netflix or mm -hmm. you know, play some video games. But honestly, stuff. dude, grab the fucking phone, 
put on some Netflix on the damn treadmill. Yeah. That's what I that's what I would always do. That was my easiest way of getting through running is I knew I wanted to run for 30 minutes, so I would put on an episode of something mm -hmm. and just run for 30 minutes and then when the episode was over, I'm like, "All right, that's 25 good enough." That's what I do. <laughs> All right, 23 minutes sounds good. Yeah. So you work out? You do the workouts? Um, I use the I use a treadmill, yeah. Okay. Um, but like see the my thing is yeah, like he said, it's just the routine, it's the mm. scheduling. Because like I've got um, my cousin, he's this crazy fit, you know, athletic. Like mm. talks to me about going to the gym every day type yeah. thing. So I'm like, yeah, I can just go to him for this help. Cause like I don't want to go to the gym and like just not know what I'm doing. Like look right. at all these machines. Like, yeah, that's that's a machine, all right. I think I can figure it out, but it's going to take some time. There are some cables and pulleys here that I'm not sure what to do, and I'm guessing this goes up my ass. <laughs> so. Do I sit on this pole? Because <laughs> I had I had went to the gym with him once. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if it was just because, like, he wasn't necessarily anticipating, like, the, uh, you know, the fact that I don't go to the gym. Yeah. Or, you know, if it's just, this is what this will be good for him. So he, I don't think he changed his, like, routine. Right. He just told me, you know, do this many reps, do this, this, and this. Like, okay. So, you know, I, we did that for about, like, an hour, hour and a half. I'm like, wow, I, I can feel that. And he's like, yeah. You know, and so... I went home and next morning I wake up. I can't move. <laughs> like it took me a good ten minutes to get out of bed because yeah. like I tried to move my arms and they're just no, oh, no, yeah. no, no. And I'm like, come on, please! <laughs> I need to get up. The yeah. most embarrassing thing that I had like related to that was I, for a while I had a personal trainer just because mm -hmm. I'm like, this is gonna, I'm paying. It's gonna keep me motivated right. to stay on top of it. I'm not gonna waste my money. Yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, we were on a leg day, Ooh. and uh, my personal trainer was the kind of guy like, as long as I wasn't, you know, patting the mat and screaming mercy, we were keep we were gonna keep going. Yeah. Um, so if I could, you know, do a leg press without, you know, hey, ah. uh, let's go ahead and change up the weight. Let's go ahead and change up the weight. Yeah. So we're we're doing this thing, and I'm just like. He's like, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. This feels great. Yeah. <laughs> like, feeling good, feeling good. We wrap up the session like, all right, man, so I'll catch you on Tuesday. All right, man, keep, see you on Tuesday. I get up, and I start walking, and I'm walking towards the door. And as I'm getting towards the door, I realize the only thing that has me moving is sheer momentum. Right? It's just my legs are trotting because the physics say to do so. Yeah. I get out in the parking lot, and I'm on the sidewalk, and I go to step off of the curb, and I step off the curb, and my leg just buckles. I buckle, and then I just fall to the ground on both knees, like, why? Oh. Meanwhile, there are people looking, and I'm like, I'm fine, guys. I'm fine, it's really. Like it's day. like day. It's, it's fine. And I get in my car. And then I go to back up, and that's when I like I had that clear thought just in time. Bro, your legs don't work. <laughs> that's what operates this. <laughs> Let's chill out for a second. Yeah. So I chilled out in my car for about 45 minutes <laughs> until I felt as though my legs could handle the 10-minute drive home. Right. Wow. God dang. Yeah. Yeah. I. But jelly legs, man, don't they feel great? <laughs> I've never had to experience leg day. Leg day? Yeah. Leg day is where it's at. If you, you want to physically improve yourself in a way that no one else, no one else can notice, like they, like they. Mm. Did you ever, did you ever tell the story about like when I, when I really messed up my knee? No. And I, yeah. So probably, we've been friends for a long time, Dave. I know about that on the show. Uh, basically, I, um, I dislocated my knee three times in my life, yeah. my right knee, and when that happens, you immediately drop to the ground. Not because you want to, because that's just what's happening. Yeah. Um, it's like if we cut your Achilles tendon. Yeah, you suddenly you're on the ground. Yeah. You're on the ground. Your um, body no longer functions the way it's yeah. supposed to. And it's not like, and every time it's happened, it's, it's literally kind of like it dislocates and pops itself back in. But the pain is instant, mm -hmm. and you just drop to your knees or ass, or it doesn't matter. I would prefer the ass. Yeah. <laughs> so when you do that, it shears cartilage out of the joint. And that doesn't go anywhere. It just stays in your knee or wherever you dislocated. Yeah. And so one day I woke up and my knee hurt. Yeah, I mean, like, you're not going to shit out the cartilage later. Yeah. It doesn't just, like, move out of your skin. 
No. Um, but I woke up, my knee was hurting. And then, like, over the course of the day, it just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it was, like, this big. It was, it, it was huge. And it hurt, like, a lot. And so I couldn't, like, I barely sleep. I couldn't walk at all. And um, I happened to find a cane in my house, like, just in a closet nice. from, like, some previous tenant. And so I'm, like, using the cane to get around. And so the next day I call up this doctor, this, like, orthopedic place. And, uh, like, first thing in the morning, I'm like, hey. And they're like, yeah, come in. I'm like, I'll be there soon. And then I get in the car and realize, like, this is my accelerating leg. <laughs> and and so it hurt. Like, it, it hurt to drive. Oh. But I get there and I, like, hobble up there and I fill out my forms. And they call me back and I hobble to the back. And they're like, what? is this like that used to be my knee once upon and now a time it's, now it's something else and so they drain it out they drain this fluid out i have a record <laughs> at this place for most fluid drained from a, G, <laughs> uh, from a knee of 130 cc's which is so much that they had to change out the syringe part way through um so yeah and as soon as it happened it immediately felt better I bet it and did. And I started, like, dancing around. Like, the pressure's gone. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't know why there's this stigma about canes. What happened to the days where a man would just carry around a cane with him just in case yeah. he needed help walking or wanted to beat someone with it? <laughs> or had a sword in it. Or yeah. had a sword in it. Thank you. You knew where I was going Or just wanted to direct traffic or whatever with it. It doesn't matter. There's just something so, like, authoritative about a cane. If yeah. you're, like, wearing a suit mm -hmm. and you have a cane, the right proper cane. It's got to be the right cane. And the right, the right suit. Right you know. cane, right suit. But if you have the cane, you have the suit, and you walk with some authority, mm -hmm. I feel like the world's your oyster. Yeah. Like, if I walked into a room or, like, like into a limousine or wherever, and I just walked in and I'm wearing a suit and I have a cane, and as soon as I walk in... I just like pop my cane up into my hand and I take off my hat, Top hat. pass my hat off yep. to someone and say, how's it going, gents? Everyone's going to do what I say. <laughs> we see. I'm automatically in charge. It's also a matter of like what kind of, you know, how you look. Cause it's like this big, you know, kind of tall, muscular build, you know, bearded guy or not bearded, you know, if you got the clean shave and sharp features, you know, people are like, oh, okay, look at him. Well, if you know, you're kind of unclean or bigger you know people are like, oh look at the penguin over there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I mean i i think yeah. it's like it's just like umbrellas mm -hmm. like who who has an umbrella when they need one i don't i don't mm -hmm. even own an umbrella i own an umbrella I it's I a, do. it's in my car do you know how often I have my umbrella when I need it when it's raining? Never. Zero Almost times. never. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, going inside this wherever I am place of business or home, it's raining. Let me get my umbrella that's in my car that I have to walk through the rain to get. Yeah. But thank God it's in my car. I got it. It's always with me. Yeah. It's just I've had umbrellas, but I just don't use them. Mm hmm like, I never park far enough away that I would be in the rain for any length of time. But more see, we're than also. Like 15 seconds. We live in the suburbs and outside of like metropolitan areas yeah. where we have a lot of personal transportation, you know? Right, right. I can get in my car, and just about anywhere that I go, I'm going to get there just fine. I'm not going to have to be outside for too terribly long before I get into shelter. So an umbrella, for the most part, is not necessary. But if you, like, live in the city, or in Britain, apparently, <laughs> you have to have an umbrella with you all the time yeah. because it can start raining any moment, and you might still have another 30, 40-minute walk oh, yeah. before you get to where you're going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's not like people are smart and operate like Hitchhiker's Guide and carry around towels with them. They just carry on um umbrellas. See, the, the or towel is arguably more versatile. Or you could just have, like, one of those, you know, like, uh, ponchos. Mm -hmm. Like the plastic ones you could just keep mm -hmm. in your back pocket. Yeah, but see, an umbrella with the right umbrella, it can look elegant. Poncho, never elegant. No, I don't know about that. Been. You show me a picture of someone looking elegant in a poncho. What kind of poncho? Like, uh, You're the one who brought up the poncho. Well, I'm just what saying, kind of poncho? There's different kinds. Like you got the rain poncho, the little plastic cheap ones. I think you were talking about the plastic cheap rain ponchos. Okay. 
I just want to make sure. Like, I'm not show me somebody sure. elegant in a yeah, plastic, we're not, we're not talking about, like, cheap rain poncho. Clint Eastwood's, you know. I know. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Marty McFly and the poncho, that <laughs> played, but that's a different poncho. I do want a Clint Eastwood style poncho. Yeah, everybody wants one of those. Maybe uh, you fuck. can make one. You just go get a blanket and cut a hole in it. <laughs> that's not the same. It oh. can be the same. It's the hipster solution. DIY solution. DIY. Yeah. DIY doesn't Little always mean good. Snitch, snitch. <laughs> snitch, snitch, snitch. Did you just cut your nose off? Snitch, snitch, snitch. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Well. You know. So. Hmm. These other things. Which we've been one? talking about. What do you think? Yeah, totally. Right? <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. I, I got him. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've seen S. Darko. I did watch the Black Panther finally. Terrible. Yes, I did what finally did watch the Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> I said I've seen Black Panther. You said it wrong too. You've seen the Black Panther. <laughs> oh. That was my favorite line of the movie. The Black Panther. <laughs> oh man! But uh, really, good, enjoyed, right? really, yes. really enjoyed it. I thought it was um, like very entertaining, mm -hmm. fantastic effects, culturally relevant in a big way. Yep. Um, and I just really enjoyed that and the aftermath of it. I think it's been a really great movie uh, and a great experience for everybody. My girlfriend's already seen it twice. Um, but did you guys hear? I know you had, you did hear because we talked about it earlier. AMC is going to be running a 31-hour yeah. marathon. That's just I thought it was like excessive when they did it for like the Civil War. I was like mm -hmm. sixteen or twelve hours, and it's like, who's gonna sit there for that? But it's just... thirty-one hour yeah. marathon, starting with Iron Man one from two thousand and eight yeah. to Black Panther two thousand eighteen. Because I I did that eighteen for, movies in ten years. For the very first Avengers movie, I sat there in the movie theater for roughly twelve hours. Mm -hmm. I remember. To see, uh, Iron Man through the very first Avengers movie. I remember that. And it was a great time. I had a great time. Um, I don't know if I could sit through 31 hours. Now, have they said, like, are there going to be breaks between the movies? Or is There's, it, like, continuous back-to-back? -back? I would, in my opinion, what I would think would be the smartest route is that you need to assume that with the exception of a few scattered films, that people who are coming to watch this marathon have seen a majority of these movies. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I would run them back to back to back to back, no intermission, mm. because you have to get a break some point. Like, if I'm going and I'm watching this marathon, whenever, you know, the first, uh, not the first Thor movie, but the second Thor movie comes on, I might take a break in the right. middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> take like a 30 minute break. I've seen that movie. Yeah. Like, Iron Man 3 comes on. Yeah, I'm taking a break during Iron Man 3. Well, Doctor yeah. Strange, I'm watching the whole fucking thing. Oh, yeah. yeah but like, there are certain movies. You've seen enough, especially the older movies like Iron Man. I could probably skip Iron Man 1 in that marathon, <laughs> yeah. honestly. I've seen Iron yeah. Man 1 like 16 <laughs> times. I can just show up late yeah. and mark my seat, whatever, and then start at Iron Man 2. When, when I did it, when I did the very first marathon, um, they didn't have like extended breaks or anything. But like between the movies, they have to have time to like switch the movie out. Mm. You know, it runs all the credits and everything. It's all digital. And so what I would do, well, they still gave us like 20, 15, 20 minutes oh, yeah, between movies. Let you go, piss. go pee, grab some food, go for a smoke break if you want to. Right. And so that that's how it worked when I, when you know, when it was only like, what, seven movies? Mm hmm So, yeah. I assume it would be the same. Like you're going to, they're going to give you time between to take it, like, at least to go to the bathroom. Well, see, the whole thing is is, is a 31-hour marathon, all right? Mm -hmm. So you assume there's 18 movies at two hours apiece. Just say two hours apiece. That would be 36 that, hours. That'd be 36 hours. Yeah. So not all of them are two hours. Yeah. But even still, we know a good number of them are two hours. Yeah. So the only way they could pack it into 31 is if they went back to back to back to back to back and said, you guys figure out the piss, shit, and food <laughs> on your own. Like, that's your deal. Yeah. Sleep in the theater, running of a shit. Maybe, maybe thirty-one is just just the running time of the movies. I, maybe they're actually doing a forty-eight hour thing. I feel like, like that would make sense. Yeah, but then again, you know, like that's a long time to wrap up your theater with smelly people. I mean, because so you're getting smelly. Hours. They just got one theater, you know. Like you're two getting theaters, smelly. They just got a quarantine, uh, and you have to think after that marathon, regardless of thirty-one or forty-eight. 
they're not using that one for the rest of the day. <laughs> like that needs to be cleaned. Like <laughs> deep clean. Not yeah. just like let's sweep up the popcorn and wipe down the tables clean. Like it needs to be cleaned. Yeah. Like Febreze all those seats because people have been sweating. And just sleeping and drooling, stinking up the place. Yeah. Probably because you know, uh, not everybody's staying awake for all. Just imagine, hours, like. just like your face on that seat, just drooling. <laughs> <laughs> all of the gross you get in your face. Yeah. Ah. No, no. No thanks. I kind of want to do it though. I, I mean, for the experience, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I feel like maybe at this point I should just hold out until they do like the final MCU movie, which. Who knows how long that would that be? That could be 30 years from now. It could be 30 years from now. I might sit through a five-day marathon. <laughs> I don't know. But that would be the thrill, yeah. wouldn't it? I mean, sorry, it's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. 10 years of MC, 18 MC movies, movies with the 19th coming out this year. And then, and then the no, 20th yeah, coming out this year. The TV shows. Yep. The, the Netflix shows. And they still the have tie-in like... tie-in comics. Mm -hmm, they have a lot of stuff just... they got stuff planned out for like the next... Five years or so, yeah. at least. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is its own canonical comic. Like yeah. it's and it's, it's amazing. Running, it's amazing, but it's it's complete completely owned universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And instead of writing comics like they used to for this series, it's all movies. Oh, yeah. And they're just going to keep building on there. Long after Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. and Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans all throw in the towel, yep. they'll keep bringing in new heroes. And, and, they they'll, keep and they'll, all, they'll all come back for cameos, guaranteed. Yeah. They'll come back for cameos. They just won't, like, you won't see another Iron Man movie. Yeah. Not with Robert Not, Downey yeah. Jr. as Tony Stark. And you won't see Tony Stark recast. No, I would hope not. Never. Yeah. You would I never mean, see have, Thor recast. You they have see... recast a character here and there, but... They've recast some characters, but in, like, the context of the series. Mm. So, like, they uh, replaced Terrence Howard with Don Cheadle yep. as Rhodes. Um, but that was one movie compared to the, what, four movies now that Don Cheadle's done as Rhodes? And before Somewhere, they recast yeah. him, he didn't really have a significant role. And, you know, Don he Cheadle, wasn't War Machine yet. Yeah, like Don was, Cheadle yeah. is War Machine. Yeah. The other yeah. guy was not War Machine. But, uh... But, I mean, like, you're not going to see them take a major hero or a major character and recast them because that actor is done. When that actor is done, that character is done. Yeah. When Chris Evans says, I'm done being Steve Rogers, I don't want to be Captain America anymore, mm -hmm. Captain America is done in the MCU. Well, you yes. won't well, see Steve them. Rogers Steve Rogers Steve Steve Rod, that, yeah. that, that character is gone. You won't see Tony Stark recast. You won't see Steve Rogers recast. You won't see Thor recast or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They're going to maintain this universe if they're smart mm -hmm. yeah like it's just like if they ever bring anybody from the shows into the movies you can't That's, recast yeah. charlie cox as daredevil you can't right. recast daredevil you can't recast jessica jones or luke I cage really, or any of them i really want to see these characters from agents of shield show up in the movies because they've been there Almost from the beginning of the MCU. Well, have they like, said they so if long. the show characters are in the MCU? Because yeah. I have heard that they said the uh, Netflix people are definitely in the MCU. Yeah. So, like, if they use I mean, they, Daredevil, they he brought, would be Charlie like, Cox. Uh, uh, Nick Fury has been on mm -hmm. Agents of Shield. Oh, okay. Sif and and Maria Hill have been on Agents of Shield, and they they've they've you know referenced the movies mm -hmm. over and over. Uh, mm -hmm. Winter was it Winter Soldier, or no? Um, Age of Ultron mm. picks up right where an episode of, of Agent Shield leaves off, like immediately after. Oh, okay. So it's like the, you're the supposed to of, watch yeah, them. The actions of Agents of Shield directly affected the movies, um, and so I really want to see these characters that have been in the but show. But it was brilliant how they did it, where you could watch that movie and not know shit about what's yeah. going on in Agents of Shield and still be perfectly content. Just pick. Yeah. All right, we're just moving into an adventure. I get it. Yep. Yeah. But if you're watching Agents of Shield, you're like, all right. Let's go! Like I'm getting resolution. Let's do it. Yep. And I, but I, you know the, these characters and these actors have been such a part of this for a while. I really want to see them get theirs. Mm -hmm. yeah. but sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, like, yeah, like I don't watch Agents of Shield, and mm -hmm. I just went straight into Ultron. I didn't even know that. Yeah. yeah. So I knew that only because Dave and some other people had told oh, me that. Okay. But yep. like when I watched it for the first time, I had no idea, and it just felt like we're just catching up with the adventure with the Avengers. Mm -hmm. On one of their missions. Like, here they all are on a mission again. Let's watch them take these guys out just to warm me up as to what's going mm -hmm. on with the team dynamic. But for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. watchers, it was, all right, 
this has gotten so serious, we're calling in the Avengers, yeah. and then the movie comes out, there they are, coming to save the day, God, coming to save the day. <laughs> But so yeah, I definitely hope that you know they'll get their recognition for for being a part of the, the like the underground mm -hmm. movement of, of all this stuff. So I just think it'd be nice to see like the uh, Netflix ones mm -hmm. because they would have to like seriously uh, change up how they do that because you know the Netflix uh, TV shows are a lot more brutal and graphic compared right. to like the movies. So, like I think that'd be interesting seeing how they would write like Daredevil or the Punisher into the movies. Yeah. Well, I feel like you'd have to be really careful with that. You do mm -hmm. want to—I do want to see them move into the MCU eventually, but I think that they would be better off in kind of like bringing some of the movies into the shows first, right? So that they can kind of lighten the tone on those shows, so that when you bring the characters into the MCU, it doesn't seem like such a culture shock and like yeah. such a change. Because if you were to take Daredevil and put in the MCU right now, where it left off, well. Where it left off, uh, he would be very out of place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be very out of place in a lot of ways. He would have to be incorporated through like Agents of Shield and through some of the MCU movie characters coming into the show mm -hmm. and like kind of getting that relationship and that dynamic established. Yeah. So when you bring it in, it doesn't feel weird. And I'm wondering if that's that's their plan for the next Avengers movie after Infinity War. Well, where so, where it's like, okay, th you know, this, we can't handle Thanos. Because that's, I mean, I, I, I have to assume that's what's going to happen. Like, here's here's Thanos, he's getting more powerful, more powerful, more powerful. We can't handle it. And then the next Avengers movie, it's like, here's fucking everybody. Everyone that we're we throwing at him. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like uh, it's difficult to, like, really figure out, for me, what they're going to do. Because they've been very versatile so far in the movies. Like... This is another thing we've talked about because, God forbid, we have a show without talking about MCU <laughs> or Netflix, but um, Ant-Man was a heist movie, yeah, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you, you know, you look at some of these other movies, like, they all had themes to them. They all mm -hmm. kind of, like, took on another genre yeah. in their movie, and they all played out so well. Right. Winter Soldier was your political thriller. Winter Soldier was political um, thriller. Guardians of the Galaxy is just a sci-fi movie. It's a sci-fi movie. Yeah. But then you look at the shows, and the shows also do the same thing. You know, yeah. um, Punisher is, uh, you know, bloody revenge. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a, it's a re re revenge show. Yeah. And uh, Daredevil is, you know, an underground, like, game mob. It's yeah. a, like a mob show. Yeah. And Jessica Jones is the investigative thriller. Mm -hmm. And things like that where they all have their own themes and genres. Iron Fist is a whiny white kid. Iron <laughs> Fist is a whiny white kid. Where they all kind of just, they all fit into these own genres so they don't always cross as well. Yeah. But then they'll just amaze you with how they do it as well. Like the way they brought Ant-Man into Captain America Civil War yeah. was brilliant to me. Like didn't miss a beat. Still maintained that same Scott Lang wit, and just dropped him right in, and right. it was good to go. Like, all right, it totally makes sense. He's here. It's fine. Let's keep doing this. Yeah, I had no questions. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what did you learn today, Dave? I learned that we still have several minutes left in the show. How many? Several? Like seven. Seven? Yeah. I think we can talk about what we learned for seven minutes. We can. I learned. Um. That Jeremy Adam really hates it when I say good things about Estarco. Estarco, yeah. Starco. Are you just saying this to like bother me? Kinda. Or did, or like, did you actually see him? Like, ah, no, I have seen. It. it was if you don't look at it trying to find a, a Donnie Darko movie, it's not awful. It's not good, but it's not awful. It's bad. Well, see, that's a problem. When they bring these things in and they attach them to other properties because they know they have a decent movie. Yeah. But they know that it's not decent enough that they can fucking sell it on its own merit. Right. They have to tack mm -hmm. it onto something and that's when it becomes bullshit. It may be a fine movie, but it's a shitty Donnie that's Darko this, movie. No, but the thing is, it wasn't even trying to be its own thing. Like It was completely trying to write off Donnie Darko. Yeah. Like they tried to use the same format. They tried to use the same, you know, scheme. Like they just changed up, you know, slight things. Like, uh, you know, uh, in the first movie, you know, you got Frank. He's just this dude made a Halloween costume, you know. But then it's in this one, it's like 
this guy, he's gone crazy or something and made this metal mask that looks like Frank. I don't even remember where he saw the original Frank mask, but it's like this scrap metal Frank mask. It's tearing up his face every time he puts it on and takes it off. And it's just like, why? Because like, they weren't even trying to make it its own thing. It's just like, hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it up a little bit. So, you know, <laughs> whatever. And yeah. then you still fail. <laughs> but I think, like, it was actually, I mean, it was still the same writers and directors of the first movie. It was actually the same girl playing uh, Donnie Darko's sister, and they and they like it came out like eight years after the first one or something, and it and so they had. Wait, it was it Maggie years. Gyllenhaal? Not well, that's the younger sister. Yeah, oh, it's, okay. it's about the younger, the, the youngest, his youngest sister. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, it and it was it was like it's totally a different, like it's a different place, different situation, different everything that they mm -hmm. kind of still tried to tie into. Donnie's weird, you know, hallucinatory bullshit. Whatever it was, but yeah, but like, I didn't. I didn't hate it. it. Wasn't I? Didn't I? Obviously, don't have the same feeling for it as Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy, what'd you learn today? I learned that, uh, you know, Dave's a jerk. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I learned, learned that today. I need. Really? I need two minutes of things that you <laughs> learned today. <laughs> we could probably spend like 18 on how Dave's a jerk, so yep. let's pick something else. Hmm. I learned that uh, all these uh, Marvel movies, you're going to be sitting for a long-ass time. Long-ass yeah. time. Like, I get, you know, it's just, that's still just crazy to think about. Because you know there's, there's going to be those people who go start to finish and may not even leave the theater, except for maybe to go to you know, the bathroom or something. Yeah. You know, just all right, all I need are my three tabs of Adderall, <laughs> and I'm good for this marathon. I yeah. brought my fanny pack full of snacks and everything. I don't even need to leave the seat. I got my snacks. I've got my speed. <laughs> it's time to have a great show. And what they don't know is there's a water bottle on my ankle, so I don't even have to get up for the bathroom. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> catheters! <laughs> Justin, what you uh, Water bottle's <sighs> full. <laughs> it's so full. Just spray it down. The <laughs> it's still so going. <laughs> I can't stop. Uh, I gross. can't stop. It's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Uh, well, I learned that uh, Dave currently holds the record for the most oh, yeah. fluid removed from a knee at a yeah. particular clinic. 120 cc's? 30. 130 cubic centimeters of fluid. Yeah. What was this nondescript fluid? I'm sorry, no I put the quotes on the wrong thing. The nondescript fluid i mean i don't know what you're putting quotes it was a fluid so when they say you have the record fluid. like is there like a plaque or something or is it just like no oh, you're dave, dave. dave. With the 130 <laughs> cc's of yeah. knee juice like, how if I, if I go back they'll be like that's the guy <laughs> that's the guy 130 oh, cc's of knee juice they might have kept it too i don't know what they did with it Ooh. like it's just like <laughs> it's just like sitting up there on one of their uh one of their shelves their trophies it's like they have like a little best knee it, place uh, Best knee place in Gwinnett County. <laughs> Dave, 130 cc's of knee juice. And then they just have that little <laughs> vial and it says Dave's knee juice. Yeah. I like That's it. That's exactly what it is. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that right there probably was about five minutes. Yeah. I'm Do guessing. Do you have hashtags? Did you bother with doing any of that? I didn't bother with any hashtags. The only one I had was Broken Dave. And hashtag knee juice. Hashtag knee juice. I like that one. <laughs> Write that down, Brian. Hashtag knee juice. Hashtag knee juice. Um, we do have the Patreon set up. Yep. Um, so, By the time uh, this video comes out, it will definitely be up and running. So if you want to see these faces and the one that's normally right there do more fun, funded mm -hmm. things, uh, go on there and, you know, Give us press, a, that, even, press that donate button. And even a dollar a month. Ooh. would be helpful. It would be very helpful. Yeah. And then don't forget to uh, follow us on Twitter, like our Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube videos. Yep. I got, you got anything else? No, I was just you pitching right there at the stuff? end. Yeah. I guess that's it pitching. then. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Balls. Good night, everybody.